It really is a lifestyle. Uh, jiu jitsu really is a lifestyle. Um, not only is it a self defense, which gives you confidence because you know how to defend yourself, but uh, it gives you balance. I mean, it gives you a workout. It's, it's just something that really helps you in your life. I think everybody should do it. My kids do it. Um, everybody that I care about, I try to get them to do jiu jitsu uh, because I really believe that it helps everyone. You know that does that does it. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for 20 years. When I, I used to wrestle when I was a little kid for like a couple of years, and and uh, when I was in high school, I did a little kickboxing. But I never really got into like serious training until I started Jiu Jitsu and had a mentor. You know, got mentored, and um, and I moved out to Brazil in uh, like the late 90s. Uh, I was about 19 and uh, you know, had a mentor like uh, Jacqueline was my professor and uh, really just was committed, obsessed with, uh, with jiu-jitsu and, and uh, just went all in. So make sure when you arch your back, your hand doesn't slide down. Make sure you keep it up like a kind of like a knee thing, right? So I pull it up and I roll back. Yeah, I'm the first directly no American black belt. I'm first, I guess, Gracie Baja, you know, Association black, American black belt. I guess the environment back then compared to now is not, you know, you trained and not everybody got their black belt. That you didn't, you know, you trained like only the tough survived. It was, you know, pretty much like a, a, a fight, a brawl, uh, you know, see who's tougher. I mean, it was like, it was, it was just a lot, a lot of tough training and, and really, the only only the strong survived. Uh, it was it was a different time. It was a different time. You know, I think now it's a lot more professional. Um, the structure, the curriculums, they're a lot more organized, and uh, it's much better for the students to learn and to get better. Back then, it was you know you, you got the information where you could get it. There was no YouTube. There was no you know there's pretty much no internet. So all the stuff that you got, you got it from VHS tapes. You got it from you know, from watching it at tournaments. So the information was a lot slower. Now it's a lot faster. You can get better a lot faster. And it's a lot more professional and a and lot, lot easier to learn, I think, and, and, and easier to, you know, to, to get better. The first time I went down, I went to, to, Gracie, to Gracie Baja in Rio, and uh, yeah, there was like a gunshots the first night that I, was, that I got there, and you know, I had like a food poisoning, I, you know, I had a little bit of a rough time. Actually, we, I stayed on this island uh, in, in Baja de Tijuca, and I had to actually paddle a boat to get to my house. Yeah, I was my buddy Amal Easton got, had this house on, on, this, on this island, and uh, he was like, yeah, take, bring, take my bike back to the house, and I was like, okay, no problem. And that day, you know, because I, you know, from New Mexico, we don't have, you know, usually, usually row boats. So uh, I got in the boat and there was, it was raining. And so there was a current going out to the ocean. And so I started to, I had never rowed a boat. And so I started rowing the boat and I started spinning because I didn't know how to row correctly. And the current started taking me out to the ocean. And I was like, oh my God. And so I started grabbing onto whatever I could, like branches or, you know, whatever I could to, uh, to uh, you know, get myself back, I guess, back to the original, like, just little pier where the boat was stationed. And I barely got back. I, I just had visions of, you know, getting pulled out to sea and all that. It was crazy. So that was, like, my first month of being in Brazil. Um, I didn't speak any, you know, Portuguese. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a great ex experience regardless. And, yeah, I'm really grateful that I had, had the opportunity to not only go down to Brazil, but to go to Brazil at that time in the history of, of, of jiu-jitsu. Um, when I came back to America, I, I continued my training. I opened up my own school in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, called like the Santa Fe Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm real proud of the work that I did there. It's still there uh, today. Um, my first black belt, Thomas Pless, runs it. And uh, we've, we've created from scratch from their first day, 15 black belts. Uh, it's a really small town. Um, so, yeah, we have we've had a lot of really good students, guys go to the UFC, world champion, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, players. It's, it's, uh, it's, I'm really proud of the work that we did there. 
you know, I got my black belt, I competed, you know, BJ Penn was the first guy to get the black belt. I closed the bracket with Mars Fertosa at the black belt division, you know, so, you know, the tradition with, with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is you close the bracket, you know, everybody kind of wins, but officially I'm not, you know, the, the first place in the, in the, in the, on the, you know, on the score sheet or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, I closed the bracket, uh, black belt division in 2002, and the environment then was, uh, you know, the main teams, you know, there's, you know, big rivalries, and it was, a, it was like, it was a beautiful time of, of, of that in Jiu Jitsu. I mean, now there's some different teams, but it was like Gracie Baja, Novo Niao, uh, Carlson Gracie, Allianz, which is, you know, still a powerhouse today. But those are like the main, uh, you know, powerhouses. Of course, also Gracie Maita, like Saulo Ribeiro and Hoyla Gracie and all that. Um, those are the main schools, and so they were always battling it out at the tournament. I had some, I had some rivals. Um, I used to go against a lot of guys from Gracie Maita for some reason. There were a lot of good lightweights, but you know, I went against um, almost all the the top guys. Yeah, there's just so many. I didn't have one guy, but it was just the different times of. The different years of competing, like uh, you know, Cameron Earl, he's no longer you know on the competition scene. Um, he was a really tough guy that I went against. Um, he was an American actually from Half Gracie, and Half Gracie was like the powerhouse. You know, Hanzo Half, they were like the powerhouses of, of jiu-jitsu in America. You know, besides myself that moved down to Brazil, um, but the, in America, so like, he was a, one of the toughest, tougher guys that I that I went against, um, went against them multiple times as well, so. But there were a lot of tough guys. I didn't really have a rival per se. I made the, I made the transition into MMA. I, you know, I was doing Jiu Jitsu, got my black belt. Um, you know, I closed the bracket, the black belt division. And so, you know, it's kind of hard for me to just keep going back for all the competitions in Brazil. But not just that, I, before that Worlds, the black belt Worlds, I fought, I did my first MMA fight, and uh, it was in you know, New Mexico, so I sold a lot of tickets, and uh, there was no money. I mean, we, we got paid like a few hundred bucks, but I sold so many tickets that I got you know, a pretty good commission, and of course, because I did that, the promoters wanted me to fight again, and so they knew I wanted to fight the champion, and so they're like, that, I don't wanna, I don't wanna you know, fight you know, again for a couple hundred bucks, but like, if you fight again, will give you a title shot. And so that's kind of what happened. So I, I fought for them again. I sold you know, a bunch of tickets and, and then I, I got the title shot and actually got the, got the, got the king of the cage belt. And then uh, you know, I actually, I gave it back because there, like I said, there was like no money. And not that I did it for the money, but it really wasn't worth like the time, you know? Um, so, so I stopped, I gave the, the belt back and then I got an offer to fight in Colorado, and then I got a fight. Uh, I got an offer to fight in Japan. So I was like, oh, that, that that'd be cool. I always wanted to fight in Japan, so I went to Japan and kind of fought all over the world, and had an opportunity to fight in the UFC. Did a couple of fights, and I did 20 fights um, overall. Like I had a career of 20 fights, uh, 20 MMA fights, and I guess what really got me into fighting MMA is I wanted to see if it worked. I wanted to see, hey, I, I'm been, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Can I do this in a, in a real fight? And so that's kind of how it started. From when I was fighting to, to, to now, it's a different sport or it's, it's just evolved so much. You know, back then you could be a jiu-jitsu guy or you could be, you know, one style and be successful. Now you really have to be a well, like a well-rounded martial artist. You have to be a good grappler. You have to be, you know, a good striker. You have to have, you know, good jiu-jitsu, good wrestling, good, good striking. Uh, or else you're not going to be successful because you're going to have a hole and somebody's going to expose that sooner or later. So I, th I, s I feel like that's the biggest difference, you know, so to, to answer your question. Um, and of course, like with that, like the guys are more, se more seasoned, like it's, a, it's its own like sport. Whereas before when I, when I was, when I started fighting, you could just be really good at Jiu Jitsu and be successful at it because the other guys didn't know Jiu Jitsu and they, I would make them play my game. The state of jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts today, I think, I think it's great. I think it's, uh, I think it's a lot harder to submit people, to submit people with jiu-jitsu than you think. Um, but like really smart guys, like they, you know, they use their, their punches to set up their submissions. But it's not as easy as people think. You know, especially it's five minutes. Uh, you know, all the guys who do is to stand up to his feet and they're back up on their feet. So it's, it's not as easy as you would think to, to do jiu-jitsu. In, in MMA, so um, 
the sport's evolved, and so with that, you know, it's, it's, it's changed the game. The beautiful thing now with, you know, back in the 90s is there's so much information out there. There's, you know, there's YouTube, there's training websites, uh, there's so much information. And so I really try to keep up with, you know, the newer stuff and try to stay, stay you know, relevant. I, you know, I play a lot of, like, not 50-50 guard, but I'm going to come out with an instructional 50-0. Um, it's a great way to you know get ankle locks and, and a lot of leg locks and, and reversals and it's a really good control position. Um, but yeah, I just try to try to always study and stay on the mat and instruct. You, you saw me today, you know, I was teaching. I te taught for three hours tonight, and I just try to just really you know stay involved and, and always learning myself. It's a good question because uh, of like how do you stay? How do you how do you stay with the new stuff because there's so much new stuff and people criticize some of the instructors because they don't they don't evolve with the times and I want to I want to to stay relevant to stay to have your students be successful you've got to you've got to study the new stuff the you know the just all, what all this what, what everybody's doing or else you get left behind so yeah, I want my students to do their best, and you know, I still compete myself, and I wanna, I wanna be cutting edge. I wanna be, you know, successful. So, yeah, study where I can, and there's so much information out there that it's, uh, it's, it's a blessing. Tournaments that are in Abu Dhabi or wherever in the world, you can see it like instantly streamed. You know, the, the next day on YouTube, it's, it's, uh, it's a great time to, to learn and to have all that information out there. I think having the different rules of, of uh, you know, like Meta Morris and, and, and the Jiu-Jitsu, Higgin Machado's uh, Jiu-Jitsu, it's a Jiu-Jitsu Pro League, you know, I think, uh, or the Eddie Bravo or the, you know, the Rose Gracie, the Gracie Nationals, I think it's, it's great, you know, because Jiu-Jitsu isn't always just about making, or it's not always, it's, it's not about making points, it's about getting the submission. And so that, those rules allow more for that to happen. So I think it's a great thing because like in a fight, I mean, you don't win by making a point, you win by, you know, submitting the guy and that's how you finish the fight. So I think it's a great thing and um, the more the better. I've, you know, I've competed in a lot of different tournaments with different rules. There was a thing called the Professional Submission League that Rico Schiaparelli was doing. It was kind of before Meta Morris, but it was a similar concept. He gave you more points for the submission attempts than the positions. So it encouraged more submissions, um, but I think the submission-only tournament or the submission-only movement is a is a great thing um, to to evolve jiu-jitsu and, and not make it um, so focused on making advantages and points, but to get down to what really matters in jiu-jitsu, which is the submission. Set a goal, set goals, um, believe in yourself, surround yourself with the right people. Um, find the right school for you, find, find the right mentors for you. One me the mentor for you might be different for someone else, so make sure you find the right school for you. Um, the, they can help you achieve the goals that you're looking to, to get out of the, the training. Um, and like I said, like set a goal, set your goals, and believe that you can achieve them and you know, work, work really hard and have fun while you're doing it.